If you relish all the things genuine high-end audio can do well, but you also want super portable audio fed by Bluetooth from your phone, the PI-8 may be your best choice. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, music lovers and audiophiles. Today we'll be reviewing the new Bowers & Wilkins PI-8 earbuds. I hope you enjoy it. Bowers & Wilkins is a venerable loudspeaker manufacturer with famous designs dating back to the 1970s and 1980s. Several of their flagship speakers have been chosen by famous recording studios, including Abbey Road, for monitoring and mastering. Bowers & Wilkins has generally tried to use science to advance the audio agenda and have been pioneers of cone materials, driver mounting, cabinet materials, and more. For more than 10 years, Bowers & Wilkins have been active in the headphone and earbud market. Their latest offerings are the new PI6 and PI8 earbuds. Today's review subject, the PI8, is the top of this new range and is priced at $399 per pair. All right, let's talk about the product itself. The PI8, which you can see here, here's the case and here's the one of the earbuds, uh, features a bevy of usability refinements that Bowers and Wilkins have gleaned from customer feedback. Examples include upgraded antennae, quick Bluetooth connection to a second pair of earbuds, and made for iPhone and Google Fast Pair support. There's also a five band equalizer in the Bowers and Wilkins app. The EQ is special in that it allows 0.5 dB adjustments, which reduces the tendency to make a mess when you're trying for small tweaks. The PI-8 features active noise cancellation with a new ANC algorithm that's said to minimize the effect of ANC on music. ANC can be turned off and it can be set to pass-through mode for talking to people and such. Included are several ear tip sizes to ensure a good fit and seal. I'm not really an earbud lover because I often find the operation of inserting the buds to be either difficult or mechanically questionable. It feels like one or both of the earbuds might fall out, or both. While your mileage may vary, I found the PI-8 impressively easy and reliable to insert. They come out of the battery case in the correct orientation for insertion. One quarter turn, and they're in and ready to rock. Maybe not for a workout at the gym, but certainly for a spreadsheet or writing some Python code. The case, by the way, is about the same size as the Apple earbuds case, and no complaints there. I think it fits in your pocket or I don't use a purse, but a purse very easily. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to The Absolute Sound magazine, which we've been publishing for over 50 years. For $20 per year in print or $10 per year in digital magazine format, you get 11 issues each with around 100 pages of exclusive equipment reviews, music reviews, and buyer's guides. You also get early access to our three awards issues, Editor's Choice, Products of the Year, and Golden Ear. To subscribe, enter this URL in your browser or go to theabsolutesound.com and click on the subscribe button. Thanks. And now back to the show. All right, let's talk about the major topic we're here for, which is sound quality. For these reviews, we primarily use the absolute sound, by which we mean the sound of real music in a real space, as the standard for our evaluations. The idea is that if audio equipment faithfully reproduces what the musicians and engineers laid down, then musical satisfaction on average will be high. This is a complex subject which we treat elsewhere, but basically that's what we aim for. The Bowers & Wilkins PI-8s do a remarkably good job against this reference. We have to allow for the fact that no headphone or earbud without external processing will correctly address the spatial cues normally set up by your personal head-related transfer function. So I won't talk much about sound stage and sound space and the like. But beyond that issue, which is endemic to headphones, the PI-8s do a solid job. Things I especially liked. First, smooth, even frequency response. Earbuds have to deal with acoustical challenges to get flat frequency response. The PI-8s do a very good job here. Bass is solid, 
Midrange is impressively balanced, and the midrange to treble transition region is slightly emphasized, but in a very musical way. Here's a graph of the perceived frequency response of the PI-8, where a horizontal line represents theoretical perfection. Note that plus or minus 2 dB variations are subtle. They mostly affect the character of the sound rather than standing out as errors. Also note that plus or minus 10 dB deviations from flat are common with headphones. The PI-8 frequency curve is about as good as you'll see. You might want some different character, for example, stronger deep bass for EDM or hip hop, or you might want slightly rolled off treble if detail in that region sends you looking for a bus to stand in front of. Next, I like the good bass response. I use reference tracks from Fakir, the sea song from the album All Glows, Alison Krauss, Maybe, from the album Forget About It, Dua Lipa, the track These Walls from Radical Optimism, and Gina Birch, I Play My Bass Loud from the album of the same name. I used others too, but I use these to understand the low end. The sound there is punchy, but there is a slow roll off below 50 hertz. That's actually much better than with many headphones. Third thing I liked was vivid dynamic expression. Bluetooth is not your friend when it comes to dynamics, but the PI-8 makes the best of this. As an example, the drums on Walk With Me Lord by The Baylor Project are jump in your seat good. Imagine by Cindy Blackman Santana is also impressive. Each musician sound lively. And then there's material like All Born Screaming from St. Vincent, which conveys the acoustic of the recording really, really nicely. I was similarly impressed with the detail of the Schubert string quintet in C, as rendered by the Eben Quartet. Plus one. Next, I liked the fact that the treble was not hashy or trashy or splashy. The frequency response curve shown above indicates a slight treble emphasis. That might suggest the common, with headphones, and much to be feared, splashy or crashy treble unevenness. But not here. The treble sounds smooth, and if you attend concerts, you'll understand that the slight treble rise is more like sitting in row E than in row J. Somewhat brighter, but no trash. All right, let me summarize. I use Apple AirPods Pro a lot when life circumstances dictate. And don't try to tell me your girlfriend actually likes to hear F1 echoing through the house at 8 a.m. on Sunday. I've come to enjoy the AirPods Pro for their easy operation and for giving enjoyable sound quality. With Bluetooth as the carrier, I wasn't sure you could do much better. But the PI-8s are better sonically in almost every way I can think of and are a match for usability. If you get the impression that I was impressed with the PI-8, you're right. Finding earbuds this good on Bluetooth is wonderful and a bit disturbing to the critic deep in my soul. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, check in the description for ways to get additional reviews that are published outside of the YouTube channel. And we thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon.